Good morning, everybody. Am I on? Yes? Okay. Wonderful. Um, so, I'm not doing a, so much a presentation on a specific digital work. I'm kind of offering more of a meditation for us in the middle of our program. Um, something to um, apply perhaps to the presentations you saw yesterday and to think of during um, this presentation this morning or for the rest of the day. Um, the topic of this comes from my work mostly at the Emory Center for Digital Scholarship, excuse me, um, which is right down the hall. You see it as you come up the stairs or out of the elevators. It's the big glass office over there. In the work that I do there, um, I consult on a lot of faculty projects um, and I teach in, um, uh, forms of uh, digital assignments in the classroom. And a lot of these consultations um, start off with why use this specific digital tool instead of having students write a paper, for example, or why use this specific platform for your um, maybe digital publishing project as opposed to this other platform or as opposed to writing a traditional monograph. What forms of knowledge do you expect this new digital format to create? So just um, a short presentation to get us thinking about this question this morning. So as we begin our panel on media today, I'd like to pose some questions for us to consider in light of this panel and our larger exploration of digital techniques for the study and teaching of South Asia. What can we learn from these new methods? For now, let us consider the issue of media. What can we learn from the presentation of digital media that text by itself doesn't offer us? What new ways of knowing does digital media offer us? For today, I'll speak to my area of study, where may fall under the category of anthropological knowledge. In the Emory Center for Digital Scholarship, we think broadly about digital scholarship from text analysis to digital archives to virtual reality, filmmaking, and digital publishing. We consider filmmaking as a piece in the constellation of digital scholarship, as many of our projects communicate through multiple modalities using a variety of media forms. Today, I look to the ways in which ethnographic filmmaking can communicate and create knowledge. The discipline of visual anthropology has thought long and hard about what kinds of knowledge visual or film forms of scholarship create. Numerous volumes, edited volumes, articles have uh, talked about what does the visual do, as visual anthropology itself may not have known and maybe still doesn't know exactly what it creates. Looking at what scholars have learned through the study of film as a source of anthropological knowledge could help us to begin to understand what forms of knowledge our very digital media projects create. In this brief presentation, I'll review some theoretical work from the filmmaker ethnographer David McDougall that focuses on what we can learn about experience through film, though distinctly not a digital work. Uh, McDougall's film Dune School Chronicles provides us with easy to access examples of how film techniques create ways of knowing in the medium that are distinctly different from ways of knowing through text. These examples may help us brainstorm what forms of digital media and digital multimedia projects create through their display and use. When we speak of media in anthropological scholarship, we speak of various forms of communication tools. So images, video, film, visualizations. These forms can either be the subject of our study or the ways in which we communicate our study to the world. However, moving from traditional textual ethnographies, for example, to film-based ones, requires us to ask how films can communicate anthropological knowledge or how they help to create that knowledge. We know well enough how to describe our theories and, via, uh, and methods via the written word, but how do crafted scenes, camera positions, and editing techniques communicate our ideas about experience, for example? In the 1970s, after nearly a century of back and forth affiliations, film and anthropology joined together, forming the new scholarly discipline of visual anthropology as we recognize it today. During and after this turn back towards the visual in anthropology, David McDougall began writing about this moment in the new discipline. From his experience as a filmmaker, he argued that films can, and in fact, uh, can, in fact, convey anthropo anthropological knowledge that is not based in scientific observation, but that is ethnographic in nature. McDougall went uh, as far to say, um, as far as to say that uh, visual anthropology may offer different ways of understanding, but also different things to understand. Textual that it, textual ethnographies cannot. Specifically, films can convey sense of time and linearity, cumulative meaning, simultaneity, symbol systems in use, intersubjectivity, relations in context, and experience in different ways than textual ethnographies, meaning that new avenues to knowledge could be opened up by using film techniques. McDougall didn't just write about knowledge that anthropological films create. As a filmmaker, he experimented with various techniques that have influenced a generation of filmmaker ethnographers. 
The foundation of McDougall's film technique lies in his perspective that the film can produce knowledge in the viewing. For McDougall, meaning is not merely the outcome uh, is not the merely the outcome of reflection upon existence, but necessarily includes the experience. In part, then, the experience of the film is the knowledge. In the tradition of observational cinema, he writes, appearance is knowledge of a kind. Showing becomes a way of saying the unsayable. Visual knowledge, as well as other forms of sensory knowledge, provides, us, um, it what, provides one of our primary means of comprehending the experience of other people. McDougall's film in 10 parts, The Dune School Chronicles from 2000, um, about adolescent boys who enter into a preparatory school in the northern Indian city of Derdun, provides examples of the forms of anthropological knowledge that can be created through the medium of film. For McDougall, Dune School Chronicles was an experiment in the ability of film to translate the, quote, social aesthetics of a preparatory school experience to an audience, that is, a sensory experience of the school. To explore this aesthetic, he constructed his film as a series of vignettes and explorations of aesthetic experience. Each chapter of the film contains many types of shots of varying length, and instead of telling any kind of traditional narrative, we use the fabric of, spe of a specific social aesthetic. Through various film techniques, McDougall attempts to let the film communicate and create knowledge for the viewer. One chapter, for example, focuses on the masculine aesthetic through the portrayal of sports on campus. McDougall uses long takes of activities performed for a high-ranking official's visit to illustrate the aesthetic environment created, actively created and maintained by the young boys. The scenes focus on bodily comportment and the boys' uniforms showing how clothing changes the movements and conduct of the students. The longer takes serve to allow the viewer to settle into the space of the scene. The longer the shot, the more likely the viewer is to lose focus on the primary actor or focus of the camera and begin what McDougall calls the digressive search throughout the scene for relations and answers to what might be happening in the frame. Other scenes in the film focus on close-ups of clothing packed away in a closet or of students doing homework, students getting measured and weighed, and class participation in lectures. The close-up shots of clothing, utensils, and boys active in their schoolwork act to bridge the distance between film subject and film viewer. McDougall perceives these kinds of shots as functioning something like haptic perception. Though interviews are typically excluded from the definitions of observational cinema as being too structured and performative, it is the viewing of these performances of individual narratives in which we can find anthropological meaning in film. McDougall writes, quote, interviews and films not only convey spoken information, but also unspoken information about the context in which they occur. They allow the speakers to describe their subjective experiences of past and present events, while simultaneously we interpret the emotions and constraint of the moment. The pieces of social aesthetic are strewn throughout the boys' lives at the school, embedded in the fabric of their experience. Quote, that social aesthetics, as both the backdrop and product of everyday life, could only be approached obliquely, through the events and material objects in which they play a variety of roles. The events might be small and incidental, or ordinary, or late and extraordinary. McDougall's takes, in a very observational cinema way, dwell in scenes to pick up the nuances and tiny details that build upon the cumulative meaning of this genre of film. Not afraid of the dreaded dead spot that films in didactic and do documentary modes fear, where there is no apparent action, McDougall's film relishes in the small things of daily life in order to build knowledge of a social aesthetic. This brief exploration of McDougall's Dune School Chronicles provides us with examples as to how anthropological knowledge can be created through film. What is interesting is that his film was not created or distributed initially through digital means. The digital environment that we create our films in now provides the opportunity to sit and dwell within films at deeper levels than McDougall may have initially considered. While the format of the film has changed, the questions about the ability of film to portray and produce anthropo anthropological knowledge has not. Many of the projects featured during the symposium contain multiple forms of media displayed through websites and databases and online archives. As we move media from physical domains to digital ones, we should consider what kind of knowledge this movement creates. Is it only new forms of access that digital, the digital adds, or do these modes of digital mediation add something? Does the ability to linger with digital images, zoom in using techniques that would be impossible for a physical image, um, using gigapan technology, for example, does it change the way we see images and make meaning from them? Do we trade one form of haptic experience, that is being able to potentially physically touch media, uh, for another, 
similar to McDougall's assertion that through film you can create a haptic life experience. What about the presentation of narratives and characteristics of daily lived experience? Once they move into the digital archive, what does that do to the performative nature of these narratives and performances? Do they lose their emergent nature and become authoritative representations? So I've, um, for example, in a forthcoming article, I explore the movement of the Bhagavata Purana online through Gaudiya Vaishnava art, uh, outlets to explore how the online environment changes how readers of the text uh, um, experience performed versions. I argue that the performance of the Bhagavata changes when it's recorded and posted online um, as it becomes a reference text while, um, rather than maintaining the qualities of a performed text. So while scholars have spent significant physical space considering the question of how visual anthropology communicates and creates anthropological knowledge, the fields that overlap in the digital humanities must now ask, does digital media and its presentation help to create and communicate new forms of knowledge? If so, what and for whom? Thank you.